Okay, so a uh, good morning to you. I uh, hope you're well. I hope you're good. I'm sure you've seen my title. Yesterday I did mention that I'm going to be on this call this morning. I've actually been doing a series, um, and it's just that the, the series obviously wasn't so potent as what I was intending to do yesterday. And uh, those of you who've been following know that um, yesterday I intended to do a topic around uh, CR1. And uh, the topic was supposed to be an expose of who exactly that man is. Uh, unfortunately, instead of, instead of getting the good feedback uh, that you would have expected, I got a backlash. And uh, the backlash was terrible. And so the beauty about such things is that they give you time to reflect. They give you time to, to, to sit back and kind of really ask, get a perspective, get an understanding. And the, the, the reason I always find every event very positive, regardless of how one may think, is because I learned that with every event, <clears throat> there's always the good perspective for that event or the bad perspective for that event. And so one can choose to see it from either a positive light or a negative light. And uh, to be honest, I'm tuned to the positive. I never see the negative in anything. I've always learned by the grace of God to look at the positive in everything. So yesterday there was a lot of very ugly comments. I'm going to read one, uh, which I think really sums up the feel and the mood of everybody. Um, and this, this particular comment comes from... a. Uh, Mwels Mwelwa, it was actually po posted on a Chisha, I forgot his name, but he had posted something in connection with the very same comment. Now, for those of you who, not, who may not be familiar, yesterday my intention was that myself and uh, Simon Mwelwa Lane TV were going to simultaneously broadcast a conversation between ourselves in which I was going to do a... Uh, 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 an expose of CR1. And uh, that particular broadcast was a, I, I advertised it, I marketed it, I said, look, 8.30 today, this is what's going to be happening, A, B, C, D, F, G. And so the backlash that came was from people who made comments for which I believe Mwells Mwelwa's comment is the ultimate summation of everything that people say. So I'm going to read this comment. It came yesterday at 12.09 on Chisha Somebody's page. And uh, it was under a comment from my friend uh, Mutinta Musokotwane. Mutinta also, uh, Chikopela, also had her views and she summed them up quite well. So I think Mwelwa's comment is very hard hitting. And, and I felt this is the comment to read. Uh, yesterday I felt very insulted by it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always straight. I'm not going to go around corners. I felt very insulted by this comment, but she did explain herself. And at the same time, I feel the pain. One of my good friends, Pastor Robbie Chembe, was also at hand. We conversed very lengthily, along with a number of other pastors, Pastor Henry Bander, my good friend Logan. Uh, and it's, there are so many. There are so many who called me yesterday. And we had long conversations. I even had a call from a Malama Katulwende and uh, Malama Katulwende I think was in the same boat with Mwelwa because Malama we spent almost 50 minutes and he he really pushed his point across and his point was summed in what I'm about to read because in spite of my explaining it didn't it didn't hit home. So what I want to do now let me read first Mwelwa's comment and then from there, I'm going to begin from there. there. There is some reparations and some work that needs to be done. So let's begin with a comment. So Mwelwa says, Dear Mr. Mwambazi and pastors alike, Woe to you, Mr. Mwambazi, that's me, and pastors alike, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every impurity. She, of course, quotes this from Matthew 23. So I know this passage so well because I preach it all the time. So... Yeah, well, today it's now being thrown at us. So, and she goes on to say, At no point do you speak against the regime that oppressed every people you led. Yet today you have guts to speak against the wizard who spoke for the people. She goes on to say, We should all be responsible for the choices we make. When you could have done the right thing, you chose not to. Um, so, 
many supposed men of the cloth chose brown envelopes in association with the incumbent government instead of speaking up or even standing for the truth. You existed as personal toys for the politicians to be used for showing so you were known as the pastor of minister so and pastors of politician so. Instead of being, sorry, instead of being pastors of God, you revered their officers, anointing their properties instead of sticking to the general, the great commission. Then she quotes the Bible again, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then she goes on to say, you went to sit at fake reconciliation parties, even when you saw that the first was not obeyed by whoever invited you. Okay? You went and created committees for prayer and reconciliation invited by the perpetrators and never with the flock you were charged with. You let us down as men of God and because you let your sheep us naked. A stone to make, my, I'm reading what she wrote, so please bear with me. Uh, a stone to make matters worse, a wizard was raised to speak truth as you lay cowering in fear but getting rich with the title, with the little that your members had allowing your flock of sheep to be attacked by anything that came parading as Christian. Then, she, then again, she quotes the Bible, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Then she goes on to say, so these are, these are now passages she was quoting from the Bible, so back to herself now. Now you want to flee by rubbishing the stone, completely forgetting you are supposed to teach salvation? We are not stupid or to be taken as such. We know who Siawan is, but you cannot call him out as bad or worse when you match at the very core. So she says we match CR1 at heart. That's what she's saying. Where were you when the old were not paid benefits, yet you anointed the cars of youths who supposedly needed empowerment? Where were you when the fire trucks were bought using money that could have eased some of our needs? Where were you when medicine ran out or moldy meds were given to the citizenry? Where were you when young people got killed by British force? Even as Vespa's parents cried that reparations had not been given to them, you stood silent in your foreign suits. You knew we were being abused, harassed in our own streets, but did nothing because of your air-conditioned tinted cars, which were better. Ouch. Okay? And then you knew well that jobs did not exist, but you had people praying the whole night for jobs, like jobs are spiritual gifts. Offering few good measures and par parading as motivation speakers to blind us from reality. You wasted money building a house of unity. I think that's a, a, a thing against the house of uh, uh, the house of God. Okay, like you did not see the poverty levels increasing at every corner. Now, I no, I repeat, then she quotes scripture. She says, Woe to you, Mr. Mwambazi and pastors alike, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and impurities. So I feel that what's her name here did definitely speak the heart of what a lot of people thought, because that's the general comments that I got everywhere. And you see, um, initially, I mean, as a human being, I was quite offended, but thank God for his spirit. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit allowed me to advertise the things I was going to speak about, because that then gave me a sense. It's literally like the spirit of God said, wait and see what people feel first. And so having this and then having interacted with all the different people that called the people that commented on the wall, the insults were heaped. I was able to pick the mood. And here's the mood, my brothers and sisters. The mood is that the church failed. And so the first thing I want to do before I go to my next stage, because there is quite a bit I have prepared here, which is going to give a picture of what's going on. Let me first begin by taking responsibility. You know, there's something in leadership called corporate responsibility. Those who know me, those who know me know that never at one point did I go to state house. Never at one point did I sit with any of those leaders. In fact, when the case of Nsama and that poor unfortunate gentleman were shot, I was actually one of those who went on record to condemn 
what occurred. I actually did a video. Now, those of you who know my style, I am not the insulting type. I believe totally in the sanctity of authority. I am not cantankerous. I am not disobedient. I do not believe in insulting elders. It doesn't matter what that elder did. If somebody is the president of the nation, he is a father. Uh, and if that father has erred, our culture and our Christianity does not allow us to insult our elders. It is anathema. It is evil. It is evil. So for me, uh, you will never hear me insult a father. I have never insulted my own mom and I've never insulted my father, even though I am justified to do so, especially my father. But I have never done that. If anything, I have honored my father. Why? Because that is the Christian thing to do. The Bible tells us that what do you do? Love your enemies. Do good to those that persecute you. That's scripture. That's what scripture is. So even when a, a person like Muelwa insults us, I, I take it. Because you know why? God is in the business of rebuking. And the church was wrong. And today I'm coming on this platform to begin the first thing that we must do. It's very important. It's for the healing of everybody watching this. The first thing we must admit is the church failed. Let's just admit that first. And I speak this corporately because I'm saying it again. As an individual, I am on record. But the video that I did condemning the violence that took place to Nsama and the evil that was perpetrated by the police is on record. You can go on, Google, go on YouTube right now, type Rev. Water Mwambazi. Just type that and look. Look at the videos that come up. And you're going to see one video of mine, which I did on the 24th of December, which went viral. I spoke, I think it was on Christmas Day, I can't remember. But I spoke against what happened. It was very sad what happened. But remember, I am not the insulting type. I'm not going to go on a platform and insult the head of state. That I will not do. Because it is not my nature to do so. I am a child of God. We respect elders. I can speak my displeasure about what happened, but I cannot insult an elder. That I can tell you. Now let's talk about the failure of the church. So corporately now I'm taking responsibility. The church failed lamentably. Why did the church fail? Because it's on record. It is on record. You see, people like myself, people like Pastor Steve Mukata, people like Pastor, there are so many. There are so many. If I start giving you the list, there are so many. Pastor Clergy, Pastor Jacob, my friend here. There are so many. We did not agree with what this government did. But I can tell you, our little voices were nothing. The error that took place was that the leaders, the fathers that should have been neutral, especially in the Pentecostal charismatic circles, these fathers were the ones going to the state house. They were the ones going to these functions and they were sitting there. And what really saddened and hurt some of us is that these fathers, we even appeared on videos condemning condemning the current president now they 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 were standing there and they were actually not just standing there but they were even literally speaking and saying how evil hh is how dare they do that how dare they do that when the very people they are endorsing were shooting people dead the very people they were endorsing were threatening individuals. This became a country of lawlessness. It became a country of lawlessness. And that's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you now the, what, what was going on. Because a lot of people don't understand. Let me first begin by addressing Sia Wan as a political activist. Listen to me carefully. It is easy for someone to be in another country, South Africa, and condemn the government. That's very easy. Every one of us can do that. Because you can stand in that country and you can insult all the leaders and nothing can happen to you. I wish he could have been able to do that in Zambia. They're like, you're in Zambia and then you do that. I, I wish that could happen so that we could see if he could do it. But somebody has mentioned Christians, Falungu, and all these things. It, it, it's true that, that it was detestable. Detestable. And I speak, I, I speak as the church now. I am taking responsibility as the church to say we were wrong. Now I'm speaking corporately. It, we were wrong. It is on record. There was an incident where there was supposed to be a reconciliatory meeting. And people went to that meeting. 
And then Kadas showed up to that meeting and beat people up in a church. It is also on record that as the people were being beaten, one of the bishops was found and one of the Kadas that were beating up actually said, and I quote, Musieni ni muntuatu. So we know, we know that these bishops were busy creating videos to brand H.H. Uh, as a homosexual supporter. That's very sad. And it's our fathers who did this. I am not going to mention names on, my, on, this, on this. I am not in that business. Those who know me know I honor fathers. It doesn't matter who they are. I honor them. I respect them. They are our fathers. But they did this and they hurt every Zambian. That's why, listen to me, that's why Sia One was able to take advantage. He's, I have no kind words for that man. He's, he's the smartest crook I've ever found in my life. He took advantage of a pain point in people. There was a pain point in people. People were hurting. People were feeling the oppressive nature of what was going on. And what did they do? The pastors and the bishops, those senior people with that authority as fathers in this nation, they went to wine and dine and even chose to be sitting in meetings and praying for peace and reconciliation. When they were the ones who were a part of a group that was had lawlessness. Lawlessness is not of God. Now, let me show you the environment we worked under. Because a lot of people say, oh, pastors were cowards. Pastors were cowards. Let me show you the environment that was going on in the, in the regime. Lest you have forgotten. Because a lot of people, you know, the thing about people on social media is they are what we call keyboard warriors. How many of you there where you are would have been able to put yourself on the firing line? I'm not in any way saying that we, we should have or shouldn't have. You know, there's a thin line between obeying the authority of the land and speaking out against evils. Very thin line. Because we as Christians must respect the authority of the day, honor that authority because the Bible teaches us to honor the authority and pray for them. But at the same time, you are praying for people that are oppressing the weak. My good friend, Pastor Clergy, posted a message after the indictment from our sister Mwelwa. This is what Pastor Clergy, my, my friend, said. Uh, Pastor Clergy Chombela, by the way, did stand as a, as a, a mayoral candidate under the DP, the, the Democratic Party. That's what he wanted to do. Uh, and of course, he wasn't able to win, but he's a politician himself. So here is what my friend Pastor Clergy said. The pastors are citizens just like other citizens. And we were not spared as well. They were equally brutalized. Listen to this. The Ministry of Religious Affairs and Guidance was used to do that. There were very few that had access to that regime. Very few. It was so barbaric. On a daily basis, some of us, Pastor Clergy, some of us received threats and many others. So we became careful and just taught our members what to do, hoping that no one was going to report us from our churches. I can tell you my friend, Pastor Clergy, actually, it was so bad when those two PF guys were killed in Kanyama. Pastor Clergy operates, he's got a very big following from Kanyama, John Leng, and Chivolia. And uh, there were accusations that Pastor Clergy was harboring UPND youth. My friend, Pastor Clergy, had to hide because there were youth, there was threats that were sent saying, we are coming to your church, we are coming to your house, you are going to see. So, we're talking about a regime that operated like that, and I'm going to give you more examples, okay? Some pastors made efforts to reach out to the regime, they would go to state house, have a meeting with the president, and then when they left, he would turn and do something else completely. If they could brutalize their own cadres, and some of you have forgotten that they beat, they gave, they slapped a minister. They, they slapped a minister. They slapped, uh, what's his name? Given Lubinda in Kawata. Kadas. This is the level they had reached. Kadas could walk into a minister's office. I saw it with my own eyes. People are waiting. A gentleman, Kada, would walk into a minister's office, bypass the secretary, bypass all the people waiting, straight inside the office. 
of a minister. A minister. Do business with that minister for 30 minutes. There are people waiting. They were told, wait, the minister will be with you. They would walk in and walk out. They ignore the, the, the secretary, ignore security. They are powerful. They are PF. That's the, that's the kind of level we had reached. Miles Sampa, I think some of you forgot that Miles Sampa, as mayor, what did he do about the Chinese? He banned the, that Chinese place. I don't know, they closed it, whatever they did. Those of you who remember, remember the story. And what happened the next, after two days? Miles Sampa, Miles Sampa, who did something that was right, was made to apologize. Now, you think that's bad enough? How about people like Bonnie Capeso? The, 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 what, what was he? I think uh, commissioner. They, they, set, they fired him on the pretext that he didn't do anything about the shooting or maybe whatever, whatever. We don't even know. How about Ray Hamonga? How many remember Ray Hamonga came up with information about the gassing? He did a statement about the gassing. What happened to Ray Hamonga? How many of you remember the civil servant that was followed, the lady that was followed in her office by cadres with a camera? They followed her in her office. You imagine how dare a normal cadre, just a cadre, nobody, not even, you know, just a cadre can go to an office of a civil servant who works for the Republic of Zambia, go in there, drag that servant out, Go on TV and even say that Tuka Mocha, Tuka Mocha, if she does anything wrong. Say that. Even the, even the people who were listening there, nothing could be said. Even the PS was afraid. Because those guys went into the PS's office. I mean, what kind of situation do you have? Where do you have a country where cadres have so much power that even the police can do nothing? The ministers can do nothing. The, everybody feared them. And you see, this is something that people don't remember because obviously today we've gotten our freedom. Zedan, people may remember John Sangwa. What did Kennedy Kamba say? Kennedy Kamba said, treat John Sangwa as a politician. Arachimona. What's that with cadres? You, you may forget that ZNBC had one of their editors fired. Do you know why he was fired? Because he spoke, he played a UPND advert. I mean, come on. UPND paid. ZNBC is a public broadcaster. We pay three kwacha TV license for crying out loud. Why can they play an advert? But because he played a UPND advert, he was fired. Do you forget there was a doctor? How many of you forget the doctor's strike? What did those people say? Get rid of that. He even got fired. You see, people, many of you don't understand the environment we're operating in. And I agree with you. The church was quiet, especially those leaders that were going to sit and eat with them. We know who they were. Now, because there were fathers in the, in the country, this, you see, you have to understand that spiritual authority carries spiritual consequence. With much power comes much responsibility. I cannot put myself at the level of our city fathers or national fathers. If a national father endorses, and do you know association is an endorsement? If you as a father and sit and associate with these people, if you go to their ceremonies, you are saying they are okay. And so the church missed the opportunity. Because we all know this was a nation of cadres and brutal people. This is what it was. And so I want to play a clip. Because you see, again, we keep forgetting these things. And I want to show you the level of what was going on, even within the patriotic front itself. Let me play this. And then you hear for yourself somebody who sent a voice note a few days ago. I don't know who she is. I'm sure she'll know herself or the identifier. But whatever the case, listen to what she has to say. Especially now that UPND has won and we have all these hypocrites moving around trying to make themselves look like good people. Listen to what this lady says. And then it will show you the level of oppressiveness everybody was operating under. People who are calling themselves Okay, in a clan, Kalipasana, Ukumona people were calling themselves 
PF die hands. Ukwa mboku la fuma mu PF di daba lusa. Ukwa mboku tele mkokula ya kuyupen di naba fwala na matishetsi ya yupen di bale imya na masimbo. Because honestly mwebantu, if this country had freedom of association, how many people could have just freely and openly joined you PF di bamba kampena? If this country had freedom of expression, how many people would have opened up and questioned government about things that were happening? But no, we were in a very hostile situation. They braved it out. They fought for this freedom. Some of the people These are the people who are even intimidating us to the anti-government, anti-government. Ama government workers to wale bomba na bobambo kubachita transfer. Ama chief to wale bomba na bobambo kumfafet mayo he is no longer a chief. It's not fair. This country nearly went into war because of hate speech, because of tribalism, because of the things that you people were saying. When we were not my jokes today, but if you look at the way they had portrayed HH, there are so many innocent Zambians who hated this man because they thought he was a real satanist. There are so many people who hated this man because of the things that were being said. It's not right. There are people who remained and loyal to the party and they fought for this freedom. But there are no chance to enjoy what they have achieved. Give them a chance to also enjoy all these years being in opposition. We have seen you growing fat. We have seen you building businesses. And then today you want to be the first to run cool. You pay that no. You pay it. You pay it. It's not right, you know. This is not what you do. If you are wrong, own up to your mistakes. Let's repent. Let's apologize. Above and it was very nice when people were saying, even what you are doing to the president is not fair. He also came in the same way by H.H. Baisa. It's also the same way. But you people are vouchers. You went there. Look what has happened. Huh? Zambia is where it is today. Because people are greedy, they are selfish, they are always looking for opportunities, they are always looking for recognition, they are always looking for praises. Just imagine right now, whoever for the number t-shirt say you pay and you never eat a PS die hard. If the president Edgar Chagalungo had returned the seat, would you have gone to UPND to extend an olive branch to say to a winner and a cabid he said to me better call my positions? It's so embarrassing. It's so nebun to bane. It's not right. In a, some of you people, overnight, but more of the life very difficult mm -hmm. for others. If you are you didn't care what people are going through. The Roman book from Manama T-shirts. Now I'm book me from newspaper. Now I'm book me from your Facebook, so that you equally suffer the embarrassment. It's so painful. Let's rebuild Zambia. I will never land that body will fix it. Now I'm book long into. Give them space. Let them fix it. In life, if you are wrong, own up to your mistakes. Apologize. That man was intimidated. He was labeled. But what was his message? He said, I want to rebuild out of peace and love. So, but there are corruption cases. Don't mistake forgiveness for weakness. Ngaba mixta forgive doesn't mean naba mele la gama charges. There were people who were dying. If I told you about community, I was saying that to buy the wala no medicine, no hospital, but I was saying that Tisha on our car. We were going to my communities. I was saying that old people were under the table. They put two days back. I was saying that they have to need to Social cash transfer six months. The bapo kapo. We were going. We were looking at the vulnerable children tending to street kids. I was saying that my youths were not going to get mashed up. Getting drunk because they were jobless. They didn't know what to do. But we enjoyed the pain and we said, let's work together. We build a better Zambia, not to Shala. Because loyalty defines character, it defines a person. However, if you make that a few women, they can need, they can need fuel, they can need fuel. You were singing, you were saying, I live well, 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 I live well. Ah, anyway, Zambia, thank you so much to the freedom fighters of today who endured the pain and intimidation to get us the freedom that we all want to enjoy today. Oh, wait, Chief Sana, shameless people. It's nine o'clock.
Process business cards. All right, so there you have it. She's just said it as it is. And you know, it's so true that so many people were living in a very hostile environment. I mean, we know for a fact that these cutters would even come to homes and literally threaten people. So, so you know, you have to realize that that's the kind of environment that was there. Now, having said that, so I've owned up. I am taking apology on behalf of the church. I am taking apology on behalf of the church corporately to say we missed it. We messed up. And I'm praying that now, going forward, as a church, we can be more vocal. You know, my bishop told me, and I love what he said. Many, many, some time back, I remember asking him, Bish, sir, you know, um, what, why don't you come out and speak these things? You know, bishop said, I learned my lesson in the children administration. We came out, we supported, we backed him, and we learned a bitter lesson because later on, President Chiruba lost the plot. And when he lost the plot, he made all the pastors that backed him up look foolish. That's why you notice that that generation of pastors from that era, the 90s, very few of them came out partisan. Literally, from Mwanawasa coming forward, they tried their best to keep their own thoughts to themselves because they had learned a bitter lesson from the first instance. But you know very well that we have a new generation of pastors, and this new generation are the ones that decided it's better to take advantage. Things are so rough, let's just go and be part of the administration. And one person noted something very strong. He said, do you realize that when they were doing the reconciliation, not a single man of God was called on the poor. Why, why, why did it have to take all these presidents from outside of Zambia? You mean to tell me we have no people within our midst that could speak with that authority as men of God to bring reconciliation? That speaks volumes about where the church is today. Now let me close with a simple statement. I'm going to talk about where we are as a church. When I read the comments that I saw in support of that man, Sia One, I realized that the church is to blame. Number one, the church never stood to speak for the people. We, may not, we do not need to defy the authorities, but we need to stand for the people. And we do not stand for the people by endorsing tyranny, corruption, and just plain chicanery, which is what exactly this government was doing. And these pastors and bishops went and stood with that. That was the greatest betrayal. So even today, as people are celebrating this transition to this new government now, we ought to take time as a church and reflect. Two things we haven't done. One, we did not stand with the people because the fathers should have done so. And two, the state of the church and the state of people is very bad. Somebody saying I'm lying, Teres Pondu stood. Yes, Teres Pondu stood as one person, but the church is a big organization. There are mother bodies. There's bishops across the country. How many of our fathers stood? Me, I know my bishop never took a side, but he was one. He was drowned by those that did. So I won't go further. Go and do your own research. Now back to my point. You see, the second greatest mistake that was made, the second greatest mistake we made is that we have not lifted the state of believers. Our believers are so immature, including the, the many of the so-called men and women of God. We suffer from one problem, emotionalism. There's a term for it. I use the word romanticism. Romanticism is the concept of being moved by emotions. But the, the terminology here is emotionalism. Emotionalism is a sign of spiritual immaturity. When people are moved emotionally and go on to make pronouncements and decisions based on their emotions, it's a sign of their immaturity. Let me begin with the believers, then I'll get to the bishops. With the believers, because they allowed the hurt and pain of the evil of this previous administration to to drive them to take on a position where they literally embraced someone who's a self-confessed dark power user. 
And, I, and yesterday I had a very wonderful conversation with uh, Malama Katulwende. Malama was very categorical. He said, you bishops, you pastors, you failed. I would rather be listening to a man like him. Then I said, but he's a, he's, he was supposed to have been a convicted child uh, offender, uh, a sexual offender. He said, it doesn't matter. This man stood. Now, was he convicted in a court of law? I said, well, you know, in, in life there are cases where there's the perception and the fact that you are no longer blameless because an issue comes up. And he said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is, they never convicted him. I said, okay, so wasn't uh, Chitalu Chilufia released? Wasn't Kambuili released? Does that change the fact that they're guilty or not? He says, well, they were not locked up. I said, are you serious? Are you ser can you actually say that? The, just because a court has not convicted someone doesn't mean there's enough evidence around them to show that there was an offense committed. All we need them is to go through the court so that now all evidence is brought out there and then they are convicted. But either way, there is a perception out there that there was corruption. And we will see it. And every time these people would say, but the courts haven't proved it. Because we know the courts were weak. We know very well that President uh, uh, Lungu should not have gone for that third term. He should not have changed that constitution. And people brought evidence, but the courts were compromised. That's the kind of situation we're living in. So even with um, the church, and, and specifically ourselves, we've allowed emotions to really, and I'm not, okay, I'm not in that group. People have allowed emotions to really rule them. So they were very angry, and then a voice came that addressed their pain. This is year one. And that's how everybody embraced that man. That's it. And you know why they did that? Because there was no voice of reason on this side. The bishops that had the authority as spiritual people, they had no ability to speak. They went and endorsed those people by sitting next to them. You know, an endorsement doesn't mean you have to say, I disagree. As long as you sit next to that person on the same table and you eat together and you make a statement while they're sitting there, that means you are agreeing with that message. You are agreeing with what that person is saying and doing. And that's the problem that we have faced because our bishops did that. So this hurt people and they got emotionally touched. And that's why people embraced Siawan. Even with his known state as a wizard, as a sorcerer, as a jagaban power, ranting man who gives power, supernatural power to people. People said, it's okay. Bring the jagaban, bring the satanist. In fact, 666, I don't care about the satanist, he's my man. You know, to say that, and then you are surprised that in Jesus' time, Two people were brought. I want to show you emotionalism and how terrible it is. Two people were brought before the Jews. One was a man called Jesus Christ. The other was a man called Barabbas. Now, a lot of people don't know the story about Barabbas. So let me educate you a bit about Barabbas so that you understand. Barabbas was a, was a freedom fighter. Barabbas was a man that fought for the freedom of Israel. You have to remember that Israel at the time was under Roman oppression. They hated the Romans for taxes. They hated the tax collectors because they were collecting money on behalf of the oppressor. Do you see the, 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 the similarities there? So a man called Barabbas was fighting. He was fighting as a freedom fighter. You would call him a terrorist today to try and get rid of the Roman Empire. So in the process, obviously he got arrested. He had committed crimes against the nation. Jesus, who should have been the king, Jesus, who should have been the king, who should have taken over and asserted the presence of God's kingdom on earth at the time, did not do anything. So what happened? When Jesus and Barabbas were brought before the people, we know, of course, there were machinations behind the scenes, but that's not my point. What did the people say? Give us Barabbas. Pilate said, but... But surely this man has done nothing. We don't care. Give us Barabbas. But you know this man is a criminal. Ah, it doesn't matter. Give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. You see, that's what emotions do. Emotions take your ability to reason, your ability to be mature, and you fail. And you instead embrace what you know is wrong. 
as long as it deals with the emotion and the pain you're having. That's what it is. So this is the challenge that we have come to find ourselves in. We have become a very emotional number of people. And it's a normal thing. This is something that's very common amongst people. We fail to reason emotionally. We, we fail to suppress our emotions and sit above our emotions as believers. The, the, the sign of a mature believer is their ability to be lower than what they feel. I'm oh, sorry, higher than what they feel. They are not led by their feelings. They are led by their maturity of God's word. You know, for you to be able to turn the other cheek when somebody attacks you, that is a Christian principle. Very few can do that. So emotionalism has been the cornerstone of the character of the church today in Zambia. Now let me go to leaders. When a person stands up as a pastor, and makes a declaration and says, this is the spirit of God. And as the spirit of God, I am saying, this will never happen. Such a person will never rule. The power of God is speaking through me. And I am saying A, B, C, D. When you do that, my friend and my fellow brother in ministry, what you have done is you've taken your emotions and allowed them to rule you so that you speak emotionally. Do you see the danger, those of you listening to me, do you see the danger of this? That is the problem we have. So, for me, I refuse to be emotional. I always ask God, give me the maturity to rise above my emotions. I will not be driven by what I feel. I am going to be driven by what the Spirit of God is saying. What is the Spirit of God saying concerning this? And it's not a mystery. The Spirit of God can easily be discerned by reading His Word. Get the Word of God and read it. You will know exactly what God is saying. The sad part is that people no longer want to hear the Word of God. They have allowed their emotions to lead them. And you know, that is an indictment on the state of the church and the blame falls squarely on us as the pastors. Why? Because the pastors were no longer mature. The maturity that should have been exposed, that, that should have been, you know, shown by the pastors got lost. There are those who were immature and allowed their feelings to have money and power and wealth to go and associate with people that were obviously evil. There are those who allowed their emotions to get them to start prophesying, saying it's God speaking when it's their own emotions speaking. And then there are those now, the masses, who were so angry with the injustice that they started to listen to someone that is obviously not a servant of God. Why? Because he says things they want to hear. And this is what I've warned before and I'll say it again. The, ch the, 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 the cleverness of a charlatan, the cleverness of of an evil wizard is that they begin by charming you and once you've been charmed they begin to seep the poison in now let me say something about this nation i love so much god is truly in control of this nation and when people do evil god will never allow evil to reign he will always intervene. Has he not intervened? You know, there are some people saying, no, this is because of the power of someone. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I get amazed how a mere human being can challenge the God of the universe. Let me mark my words. And I'm not saying this with evil malice. I'm just saying, mark my words. God will not share his glory with anybody. I'm going to say that again. Mark my words. God will not share his glory with anybody. Any man, and I mean any man, I don't care which man it is. Any man who thinks that the circumstances and situation in Zambia is because of them, woe unto them. They will know who the living God is. This nation has God's hand over it. And God will stand for this nation and he will protect this nation. He will not allow forces of darkness. He will not allow forces of witchcraft. He will not allow forces of evil to come over this nation. We are such a privileged nation. 
When that man, David Livingston, knelt dying in this country and prayed for this nation and made a declaration about this nation, it was powerful, ladies and gentlemen. So dark forces have tried since then to take over this nation, but they have never done it. Even Kaunda, when he wrote about this, you know, when he was writing his book on the philosophy of humanism, I guess he never understood the depth of how evil humanism was. But I love the fact that in 1970, Go, uh, Kaunda wrote something about changing of mindset. I am even more proud that in 91, when God raised Chiluwa, Chiluwa was used to break every altar and every power of darkness that had been set over this nation. I'm so grateful that God did that. And then God used that same man who lost it later to bring a declaration of Christianity over this nation. I can tell you that God's hand has been on this nation ever since. We have our neighbors. Go and ask what's going on in Zimbabwe. Go see what's going on in the Congo. Go see what's going on in Angola. Look at our own nation. Look what's going on in South Africa. God somehow by his grace has kept us. When Kaunda ruled, he was surrounded by enemies, powerful enemies. He had the US on one side, he had Russia on the other. He had South Africa, he had Rhodesia. These are Muzungus. All of them wanted him dead. They wanted all those freedom fighters dead. But somehow God protected Zambia. Mozambique is in a lot of problems right now. We have never had an assassination. We've never had a coup. We've had too many funny ones, but nothing to write home about. We have had seven, seven, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a joke. Seven successful transitions over four different regimes. These are not jokes. So you have to understand that people who brought death and murder, God dealt with him. So, so I love this nation. Even today, I assure you, I don't care what power from whoever with whatever ancestral spirits can come. God will not share his glory with anybody. And woe to him, the man that thinks he can take the glory of God and parade himself. Watch the end of that man unless he repents. Watch the end of that man unless he repents. And you will come back and testify from this video. So two things I've done today. Number one, I have apologized on behalf of the church because we missed it. And that's why a wizard was able to speak on behalf of the people. And number two, I've shown the emotional instability of our people. Both as people and as clergy. We missed it also. We are so emotional. And so I want those of you who keep complaining on those voice on those messages there, please go back to the beginning of the video, you know, because sometimes it can be so annoying that people are not reading and they're going on about things that were mentioned before. So just go back to the beginning of the video, listen to the whole video, and then make a comment. I think it'll be fair for all of us than to keep going, where were you? Where were you? Go to the beginning of the video. So you you hear what I had to say then. So I want to thank all of you for coming through. Please share this video with everybody. This is a heartfelt appeal from myself. And in my next video, not the one I'm going to do now, in about two to three weeks time, I'm going to address the seriousness of this emotionalism and what is going on. But to all of you that were able to stand right through, those of you that were able to resist this government, that as men and women of God, I thank God for you. Those of us, were, we are also able to do what we could. We never went to sit down. On, in the, on those tables. But you know, the truth of the matter is people are angry. So they have a right to be angry. Let them vent. It's very important. It's a part of healing. We, we get insulted. It's okay. I mean, if Jesus was insulted, who, who am I? But the beauty is I have spoken the truth. And those of you that have wisdom, hear me out. Do not go and listen to that charlatan. End of story. Oh, I'm being asked about, yeah, well, I've already said, I don't want to mention names, ladies and gentlemen, on this broadcast. Just know that any prophet who stood and spoke what has not come true spoke from their emotions. And that's why I'm telling you that emotionalism has become a problem in this country, in the church, because we have people in the church, the flock, who are so emotional, they listen to satanists. And then we have bishops and pastors who are so emotional and prophets that they speak what they think is God's voice when it's their own emotions. All right, so for myself, thank you so much. May God richly bless you and have a very productive day.